Glad you're here to worship God. I know a lot's been going on this week, and, and I hope you're here just to, to lift up God's name and, and understand this. He is still on his throne, and he is still in control. So no matter what's going on in this world, we trust in that. So uh, lots going on, uh, as John alluded to in the uh, video announcements, that so much is happening, but man, we really need uh, like a Thursday showing for you to come here. There is a, a summertime blood drive, and we need 15 units, as I always say, through the arm, through the nose, I'm going to get 15 units, okay? So, you need 15 units, and come on here from 4 o'clock till 7 o'clock. Students are heading out tomorrow. Yes. woo All the way down to Circle 6 camp for the week, so lift them up. Then RAs are heading out on Wednesday, and they're heading to camp, so please be in prayer about all the, the traveling that's been going on. Uh, we're going to be having a great outdoor event coming at the end of July, so please be lifting that up. As, as John said, we need homemade ice cream and uh, bring a watermelon or two. Henry's going to be here cooking some brisket and sausage. And it's going to be a great, great, a uh, little bit warm, but it'll be okay. You have some cool, cool entertainment. How's that? So we're here to worship. One of the ways we worship is through prayer. And I don't know about you, but this week a lot of prayer has been needed. And so I hope we don't do it just in the crisis. I hope we do it every single day. But you're welcome to come down to the altar. You're welcome to kneel and pray. Kim and I are going to be down here praying. You're welcome to join us. So let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Children, come on down. We have a children's moment for you. Oh, it's time. Come on down. Don't be scared. Ooh, there we go. Come on down. Here we are. Yes, all happy. Hey, what's been going on? Anybody gone swimming this summer? Yeah, yeah. Has anybody seen any animals this summer? A shark. A shark? Oh, my goodness. We've got to clean up that bathtub. Charleston? An alligator? Wow, I've got a picture on the big screens up here. And I'm wondering if anybody can tell me what that picture is. Doves, no. It's not crows. Cranes? No, they're, they're geese. And they're flying way up in the sky. What, what kind of formation are they in? Does it form a letter? It's a V, yeah. Do you know why one line is longer than the other? Because one has more than the other. Yeah, it's really smart. Yeah. But you know what they're doing? You know what that lead geese does? It honks really loud. And it's an encouraging honk to all the other ones to come on, guys. I'm leading you. It's a gift of, of encouragement to all the others saying, I'm breaking up all the wind. You got it easy behind me. Just keep on flapping those wings. Do you know that every one of you has a special gift from God? Every one of you has a special gift. Your parents might be surprised, but you have a gift. And listen to what the scripture verse says about these gifts that God gives us in Romans. I'll talk about it today. 
It says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So God has given you a gift. And some of you might be encouragers. Some of you like to get up really early in the morning. No. And make your bed and pick up your dirty clothes. A gift of cleaning. No, not going to happen, huh? Well, maybe you guys can draw pretty pictures. And you can pass them out to people. Yeah, every one of you has a gift. And understand this, you might not know it now, but one day, someone's going to come up to you and say, man, that's really neat. You're an encourager, or you can sing, or you can play an instrument. And you can say, you know what? That gift is from God. So I want to encourage you, as you go through summertime and all the fun and crazy stuff that goes on, God's given you a gift. And it's time for you to discover that gift and then share it with others, okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today and the blessings you've given us and the special gifts you've given each girl and each boy. May they discover that gift of being an encourager, of being somebody who is a worker out there, and let them share those gifts with others. We ask in your name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Good job. This morning um, in the youth, I posed a question to them and I asked them, have they ever been broken for God? I know sometimes in life we, we break down ourselves because of situations or stories in the news. But this song goes perfect with that question, who are you holding on to? Is it God or is it the world? Let's sing that together. Give us clean hands this morning. Give us 
us clean hands and give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. And give us clean hands and give us pure
are beautiful, you are beautiful, oh God, there is no one more beautiful, you are beautiful, oh God, you are the most beautiful, he's wonderful, you are wonderful, you are wonderful, oh God, there is no one more wonderful, you are wonderful. by his mercy and I'm overwhelmed by his beauty especially the mercy that happened on that tree when our when our God sent his son to die for us and he bled out just for us on a hill called Calvary
are thankful for your mercy. We're thankful for that mercy tree and for what you did on that tree. I pray that we never forget that. That we remember it daily. Father, that you are glorified for that and that you are lifted high. That's what we do. That's why we sing. That's why we worship. So, Father, I pray that you continue that. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm so confused.
Amen, folks. We have the ability to change the story. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church this morning. We welcome our live stream family that's out there that's kind of clicked in to be part of us. We're on this journey here, and after last week, let me just give you a heads up on me. These words I wrote to speak to you this morning were written Thursday morning, not Thursday night or Friday morning. So you can kind of take that into perspective on everything that's happened and as we take this journey right here of mercy, mercy, mercy. I don't know if you've ever said those words in a context, but maybe it was kind of like this. You walked into your child's room and said, I never heard that tornado come through here. You know what I'm talking about? Sure, I know. I know. Or maybe you, you've just kind of walked in there and said, man, mercy, mercy. Would you look at this and you just kind of fill in the blank. Or maybe you've actually had some people come into your life and go, hey, would you mind if I come over to your house and do your laundry and clean your house for you? Just go ahead and raise your hand. I know that happens all the time, right? Would you mind if I come over to your house and fix you a meal? You just sit in the living room and watch TV. Let me do, just go. Somebody said, hey, man, your pickup's awful dirty, Pastor Steve. Let me just go ahead and raise. Mercy, me. Mercy, mercy. You know, you're thinking, okay, what's up? What do you want? As it says, what's your ulterior motive? So here's a true story about ulterior motive. And let me just give you the heads up on what ulterior motive means. It's this. Ulterior motive is a hidden or covert or undisclosed reason for doing something. True story, in Kansas City, Missouri, there's a pastor. And the pastor is kind of off his nut. He was crazy. He actually wanted his church to go out and do something outside the church to show other people God's love. That's kind of crazy, isn't it? So he went over to the local large grocery store. And he said, could I talk to the manager? I'd like to propose something to him. And the assistant said, well, how can I help you? And the pastor said, well, on Saturday morning, we always realize how the parking lot's a mess. And, and there's grocery carts everywhere. We would like to come out Saturday morning, some fo folks in the church, and just kind of clean up your parking lot and put all the grocery carts all together and stack them nice and neat. And so the assistant manager goes, well, what's your motive? No motive. We would just like to do this for you. And so the assistant goes back to the manager's at, and after a little while later, the, the assistant comes back shaking his head. And he says, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, we can't allow you to do that. And the pastor's shocked. He's like, what? What? You won't let us come out on a Saturday morning and clean your parking lot and stack up your grocery? Why not? And the assistant said, well, I know you said that you have no motive, but... Everyone has an ulterior motive. Gosh. Think about that for just a minute. Everyone has an ulterior motive. That means for everyone here this morning, every one of you have an ulterior motive for coming to church. Instead of just saying worshiping God, it's, it's something else. Maybe a free lunch. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why you came. Think about the ulterior motives in your lives. Why you do things. So I wrote this down for me, and I know you're, there's some legalists here, there's some attorneys with that mind that says, you know, Steve, they're taking on quite a liability, that grocery store, if they allow them to do that. Somebody could stump their toe in the parking lot and sue the grocery store. One of those grocery carts might get away from them, and they might bump into a car and get sued. There's a lot of liability there, Steve. I wrote this. We can liability ourselves into doing absolutely nothing. Okay? Let's, let's close the church doors because there's a liability of somebody stumping their toe walking into the Lord's house. Or, or there's a liability. Somebody might catch cold in the worship center because it's so cold. There's a liability there, Steve. So let's don't have church. We can liability ourselves into doing nothing. That's not what God wants us to do. So, so that being said, and understand this, we, we profess to be the hands and feet of, of God to go out and do His Son's will. To serve, not to be served. To show, not to show off. And that's where we're at today. And I, and I know what's on your mind is Thursday night, and we're going to get to that. But understand this. Mercy, mercy, mercy. I don't know if you've ever had those words come to your head, through your heart, out your mouth, somewhere. But sometimes you just got to throw up your hands and say, Lord, have mercy. Have you been there? If you got a teenager, you've said it at least once. Okay? If you're married, 
You've said it at least once. Lord, have mercy if I have to... No, I'm, I'm not going to go there. But think about the times you have asked the Lord for mercy. And so you're probably wondering so many things in your life. What is he talking about? What about mercy? Where are we at? What are we doing? Well, we're in the book of Romans with a story I kind of give a little nibble to the kids about in children's moment. Romans chapter 12. Think about liabilitying yourself into doing nothing. And this is, what, this is what the word says. Paul's talking to us very clearly. We have different gifts. Every single one of us has a different gift. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith, not yourself. If it's serving, this is a crazy statement. If it's serving, then serve. Isn't that kind of, one of them, duh, should be in parentheses next to it? If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, whoo, how about give encouragement? If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, then lead diligently. If it's to show mercy, then do it cheerfully. Do it cheerfully. So what are you thinking about now? What's, what's mercy? If you've got an, anybody have an older brother? Older brother? This is what mercy was in my house. Ah, mercy! Ah! The arm behind the back, the twisting. I had an older brother. and He was ruthless. He's not watching. I know that, so I can say anything I want about it. He was ruthless. Hey, Steve, go get me something to drink. No. Oh, okay, okay. Come on, some of you were there. Some of you are, you know what I'm talking about. Ruthless, older brother. That was the only mercy I knew. But here's the definition of mercy that I hope we all know. Mercy is a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion. Mercy is a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion. That's what God does. God shows us mercy, an act of favor or divine blessing. And this goes on to say, compassionate treatment to those in need. You know what that definition means? That's what we are to do. We are to show people mercy. Let me say that again. A compassionate treatment to those in need. Wow. Showing mercy. You know what that also means? Now they thought it was pretty funny in the early service when I told them that I actually had a pair of work gloves. Okay, that's what they did. And my work gloves were actually torn. They had holes in them. And one guy said, the holes are where your fingers go. <laughs> okay, thanks. I appreciate that. But I actually got work gloves. And you know why you wear work gloves? is because you're going to get down and dirty in something. Now, some of you guys' gloves were gloves. I don't need no stinking gloves. I just get out there and I got cuts and I got scars and I got scabs and I got calluses. Great. But let me tell you, Christians, let me say this really. Let me get it like John. Let me get it real personal. I think it's time we get out of the church and go show some mercy. I think it's time we get our hands dirty. I truly believe that we have had our hands too pristine and perfect for too long. I think we get to sit in this air-conditioned building in these padded pews and we nod our hands and we might get crazy and raise a hand. We might even get radical and walk down an aisle and kneel or put our arm around somebody and pray. But when it comes to going out in this world and making a difference, well, that's for, well, fill in the blank, whoever it is. That's for, that's for those people that are called into service. We're all called to service. We're all called to go and serve. And that's what mercy is, is going and showing. Showing, not just saying. It's so easy to sit in here and to speak and to sit in here and amen and go, man, that's good, man. You got us going, Steve. Well, then good, let's go. Let's all giddy up and go out there. Let's, let's get our hands dirty, not act like we're going to get them dirty. And there are some radical things that are done here at Calvary. And if you've ever got a complaint about it, make sure it comes to me. Because I'm probably the instigator of them. Because a lot of times it starts with, hey, Kurt, man, you do anything? Oh, uh, no, what's up? Like, hey, could you come in? Next thing you know, man. Hey, Mason, you got anything? Hey, Kevin, could you come over here and we're going to go. The crazy things that we do here at Calvary, like go to Lubbock, Texas and feed homeless people that live in tents. And we don't feed them bologna and bread. Feed them brisket, and sausage, potato salad, sweet tea, and homemade cobbler. Why, why would you go there and why would you feed them that? Isn't, isn't PB&J good enough? They're human beings, no different than you and I. 
And we need to show them some mercy like you would be wanted some mercy shown to you. Or what about, what about the end of this month when we go outside the walls and go out in the parking lot and play some music and eat some barbecue and some, some sausage and some homemade uh, ice cream? And we're going to invite people to come. Well, Steve, you know, they, they're not members. Well, what church was Jesus a member of? Where was his letter? So many times we get wrapped up in rules and regulations. What about next month, August 13th, a Saturday morning, out at the old country club? You're going to go out there and do what? Yeah, feed some bikers some breakfast for free. What? What, what are you feeding them for? What are you feeding them for, Steve? Well, who is them? Define them. Well, you know those bikers. Oh, those businessmen and women, those hardworking laborers, those men and women who like to get on their motorcycles and ride out and, and, and be seen. Those people, no, no, not, you know, those bikers. Well, those people that need to be shown mercy and God's love. Those, those people you're talking about. Steve, you know, they're, they're dirty. Oh. Oh, so you're perfect and pristine. I've been looking for one of you. I've been looking for one of you. I've heard about you. You're that perfect and pristine person. You don't have no sin. You have got no junk in you. Well, no, you don't. I know what you mean. I have a story this morning, Mark chapter 1, that kind of says that. Mark chapter 1, an amazing story about Jesus and a man. A man with leprosy. A filthy, disgusting, vile disease. A man with leprosy came to him, Jesus, and begged him. On his knees begged him. If you're willing, you can make me clean. Jesus was indignant, not at the man, but at the people around him. That shunned him, that, that pushed him to the side. He was angry and he said, and he says, he reached out his hand and touched him. Now understand this. I checked some translations. It did not say he reached out his gloved hand. He reached out his protected hand. He reached out his surgically included hand that was wrapped up. It says he reached out his hand. Now you theologians are already ahead of me. Well, that's Jesus. Yep, it sure is. And what he's trying to say to you and show you is, it's okay in my name to touch the unclean. And here we are in this protective barrier of Christianity. And we don't go over to the unclean. We open the door and we might ring that triangle. Y'all come on in now, you filthy dirt bags. Come on in. And if you're a visitor, if you're a different color, if you're a little socially, economically challenged, if you're a little mentally handicapped, then you might want to sit somewhere else because we here clean are over here. Can, can you really wrap your head around somebody shunning somebody in the house of the Lord? But we do. We get visitors here at Calvary Baptist all the time. Hey, how are you? Good to have you here, man. You're welcome to sit anywhere. We don't have reserved seating. Oh, really? Well, I don't want to get in nobody. We don't going to get in nobody's seat. This is, this is the house of the Lord. And we're going to show mercy. And we're going to show God's love. And he said this. I'm willing I'm willing, he said, be clean. He reached out his hand and he touched him. I'm willing, be clean. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And this is where it gets. This is where the rubber meets the road. It's when, well, what's, what's Steve doing moving down? He's coming out here. Somebody go ahead and say, hey, Steve, you're supposed to be up there. You're not supposed to be amongst us. What are you doing back here, Steve? What happens if I touch you? Oh, don't, don't touch me. Because then you have to call my name out, Kyla. No, you're awake, Kyla. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm with you. I got you. Because you're supposed to be up there, Steve. You're not supposed to move outside that perimeter, that boundary, Steve. Don't get out of your bubble, Steve. And that's where we're at, Christians. We don't want to get out of our bubble and touch somebody. Oh, we'll pray for them. Oh, my goodness, we'll get in our holy huddle. We might even get on our knees. I think there's a guy named Josh Duran still over in Germany. A young lady by the name of Stephanie Seaton right here, just back from Kenya. Don't you think she wanted us to kind of touch and lay hands and lift up? Absolutely. 
oh, let's, let's get away. No, we're not supposed to do that. Yes, we are, because what did Jesus do? He reached out his hand and he touched. He touched a man with leprosy. One of the vilest diseases out there. And yes, it's still prevalent today. It's not running rampant. But as soon as we hear leper, unclean, that's what we're supposed to yell. And so, Steve, you're supposed to stay up in your protective safe zone. And you're just supposed to go, okay, y'all, God bless you out there. But he wants us to get our hands dirty. He wants us to get out there and mix it up. He wants us to get out there and show, not sterilely show, but to show other people his love and his mercy. Filled with compassion, Jesus touched him. Filled with mercy. There's some people right at these doors who live right here in Terry County who, who need to be touched. Who need to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Why would a pastor in Kansas City, Missouri want his congregation to go and clean a parking lot and put up grocery carts? Because he did have an ulterior motive. That was to show God's love and mercy. And let me just tell you, I'm going to brag about Calvary. That's where I serve at. And I can't tell you how many people came up after last Tuesday, after the fireworks were picked up with, well, I can't believe. I can't believe you would. Why would you go? How come you did? Because you wanted to show God's love. I'm fed up to here with showing God's griping and groaning and moaning when we do that really good. Why don't we show God's love and mercy to our community? Have a little bit of pride and say, you know what? It, it took us an hour, a little over an hour, 18 bags of trash. And you know what? We didn't have to go to the hospital and get a tetanus shot. We didn't have to go and get sterilized. We just kind of went back and we stunk a little bit at the church. Shannon and Kira were like, "Woo!" But you know what? Went and showered and we're okay. We want to show God's mercy. And, and folks, if you don't want to show God's mercy, then understand this, then I encourage you to find a church elsewhere. Because here at Calvary, we are going to go and show. We're just not going to say that we love you, that we're proud of you, that we want to make a difference. We are going to show God's love. You don't touch lepers. They are diseased. They're, they're unclean. Hey, Steve, you don't, you don't feed bikers. They're dirty. No, they're human beings. They're human beings just like you and me. And there is no doubt there is evil in this world. We, we saw it evident on Thursday night. But understand this. Understand this clearly. I, I don't hate black or brown or yellow or white. I hate the evil that is perpetrated through the soul without Jesus Christ. Because as Kim reminded me, and I know I'm going to say it wrong, that somebody said that the soul does not have a color. The soul doesn't have a color. But yet we tag that with them is the word we like, them. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the children of the world and we profess to be Christ in flesh. Then we too should love the people of the world. The story of Jesus touching lepers. The story of God's mercy through God's son should, should burden us. And What have I done? I mean, think about this, parents. You not touching your child, your daughter, or your son. Daddy, can you tell me good night? Good night. Go to bed. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. What do they do? They come and they run. They jump up on your lap. And I don't care what age they are. They squeeze you and they hold you. And that's what, that's what God in flesh, that's what we are to do. But, but Steve, they're dirty. Yeah, and who here isn't? Oh, I'm not talking now. You guys are perfect and pristine right now. But inside this, inside this flesh and blood and bone and marrow, there's sin. And sin is dirty. And sin is disgusting. But Jesus Christ wanted this story to remind us that no matter, this man looked filthy on the outside, I cleansed him. I cleansed him immediately. I wonder where we're at, church. Are we pushing back the world and saying that we love it? Or are we engaging in the dirt and getting our hands dirty? Listen to the words that David wrote here in Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is God. His mercy is everlasting. And His truth endures to all generations. There are no lies out there. <coughs> 
excuse me, uh, Psalm 118, 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His mercy. His mercy endures forever. Who here doesn't know Psalm 23? At the end are these words. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, goodness and mercy, compassion from God that given to us that we would show to others. Parents, you might have had to discipline your child. And then afterwards, you showed them mercy by in, just enveloping them in your love. God disciplines us when we do wrong and then envelops us in his love by saying, now let's do right. For God so loved the world that he showed us mercy by sending his one and only son. Because God knew we couldn't get to him without being cleansed. And the only way to be cleansed is through the blood, the blood of his son. And he sent his one and only son. His one and only son to us. Who here doesn't need a little more mercy? Mercy is not getting close to people when they hurt. Mercy is putting your arms around people when they hurt. Not just standing by them, but loving them and walking with them. It's been said right now, we're hurting. Dallas, Texas is hurting. San Antonio, Texas is hurting. There's another shooting there. And you think, oh man, what's happening to the world? Well, understand this, there's evil. There's evil in the world. But we Christians have been standing around doing nothing for too long. I mean, think about you and your interaction with the policeman or a fireman. It's like, oh, hey, 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 how are you? Or how many times you've grumbled and mumbled when they've rolled up behind you with the lights on or when they've blocked traffic for a funeral or how busy your life was and now all of a sudden it's a little different. Five police officers murdered, many injured, families forever changed because of an evil act, evil that envelops somebody. And I say this, without the presence of God, there's, there's a presence of an evil entity. Because there's an evil entity called the devil and he will invade where there's space to invade. But where there's Jesus Christ, there's no space. He consumes head to toe, front to back. He's covering you. It's an evil world and understand this, it ain't getting better. Does that mean we hide? Does that mean we no longer touch? Show no mercy. No mercy. Yet we serve a God of mercy. Because if we didn't serve a God of mercy, then you wouldn't be here. He wouldn't need you. He desires you to help him get one more soul to the kingdom. Why do we do what we do at Calvary? For one more soul. For one more soul to see what God's love and God's mercy is in life and in action. For one more soul that might wonder, is there really a God? That, that video is a, is a purpose-filled video. We can change the story of people's lives, but this is it, folks. This is the only way we can do it, getting in their lives. We can't change their lives by sitting in here going, amen, Steve, you bet, that's good, and then going back out there right into your own little rut and your own little life and not engaging in anybody else's life. Coming into church in your own little way, in your own little walk, in your own little pew, and saying, I'm good, I'm good, I'm here, I came to church. I don't need you to come to church. I need you to be the church. I need you to be the church outside the four walls of 402. I need you to be the church when, when somebody is ignoring somebody, when somebody needs help, when somebody feels, I don't know of anybody in the world who even knows me. We need to be the church. And so many times you've in your quiet place have cried out, God have mercy. I can't do this no more. God, I, God have mercy. Mercy, God, I need you. He's going to bring his compassion in the only way God can. But when you have that mercy, understand this. You are not to hide or hoard that mercy. There are those who need God's mercy. Yet sometimes I've heard that hate is better than mercy. I just hate them. Oh, I just, I just hate. It's not of God. We are to hate what is evil. What is evil? That's the devil. That's the devil who has invaded somebody's life without Jesus Christ, and I hate that. I, I, I'm here to tell you, man, I, God, give me one more day, one more moment to give one more person hope. 
that there's a God out there that loves them unconditionally, who wants to change them from wrong to right, who wants to change them from dark to light. That's the God that we serve. I don't know what you did Saturday night, or excuse me, Thursday night when you heard it. Maybe you heard it Friday morning. Maybe you just shook your head and went back into your life. I couldn't, I, I couldn't, couldn't wrap my head around that to protect and serve. And I thank God for all of our first responders who are out there. And you might grumble and complain and gripe and spit on the ground. But the first thing you do when something's going wrong is 911. And they don't go, hey, are, are you supporting us? Did you complain about us? Well, because if you did, we're not coming out. What their answer is, what's your emergency? And they're on their way. And maybe even today or tomorrow or the next day when you see a first responder, you'll be a little more apt to go, thanks. You know, it's the same with our military. I know we just kind of take them for granted when they're just kind of out there. They're out of sight, out of mind. Mercy on us for getting our military and our first responders. God have mercy. Because without them, we're in a dictatorship instead of freedom. Think about that. I don't want to be in a dictatorship. I want freedom. But I slip one more verse in here. It's in Luke chapter 6. Steve, I don't know if I can be. I don't know how to show mercy. Here it is. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. My Heavenly Father is merciful to me because, folks, let me tell you, I, I messed up. I messed up a lot. But He was merciful to forgive me because of His Son, Jesus Christ. And because of that mercy, I'm here to tell you, I've got the mercy of Jesus Christ in me. And I, I won't name names, I won't ask for hands, but if you're married, just kind of, have you ever had a disagreement? Just don't look at your spouse, because that could get start another one. But You ever had a disagreement if you've ever been married? If you've got children, has your child ever caused you to just, oh Lord, have mercy. One more and I'm going to send them back to you. Sure, you've been there. You've been at your wit's end. And all of a sudden that mercy, some, something comes over you. And next thing you know, either a tear or, come here, man, let's, let's talk about this. We're going to get through this. That's God's mercy. He's not only showed it to you, he's, he's given it to you. Be merciful. You've got it. And I know some people want to pick up the pitchfork and the torch. I say we pick up the cross and show mercy. Because God's word says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Anybody here named the Lord? Just checking because it's not your right to enact vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Be merciful just as your father is. Dallas is hurting. Our nation is hurting. And we're sitting there shaking our oh, it's evil. It's, it's dark out there. No, it's not. We are the light of the world. A city on a hill. We are not hidden under a rock or under a basket. We are to shine for all to see, and they would see God's mercy and love in us. And it starts right here. It starts with you and for me. Because his word says that, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's mercy. Because I don't know about you, but mine is, if, if you do that one more time, you might as well just pack your, I'm breaking your dinner plate, get out of here. If you do that one more, you mess up one more time, my God does not do that. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still his enemy, Jesus died for us. That's mercy. Yes, our nation is having difficult times. It'll only have dark times if we stop being the light to the world. What is your ulterior motive for being in the house of the Lord this morning? Is it just to show up and say, I went to church? Or is it to be fired up and go light up a world? Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you this day, and it is a day that you've made for us to rejoice and to be glad in it. 
And yet sometimes, Father, we'll grumble in it and we'll gripe in it, but we will not rejoice in it. So God, this morning as the altar is open, the aisles are wide open, my heart's prayer is that mercy will come over your, your people. It's been said in just, just the videos that were shown this morning by John that God have mercy on us when we don't stand up and help where need is helped, need is needed. And God, I pray that we, we have men that will step up and we were just talking this morning about godly men taking a stand. And when godly men take a stand and the family follows them and the church follows them. So Father, this morning I, I pray for the men out there. The men that, that know who you are, but I don't know if they have you in their heart and soul. And if they have you, then let that be seen in them. To be the ones that say, I'll do that to get their hands dirty, to touch those unclean, to be seen as a church. It's not a church in a building, but a church outside. What's our ulterior motive? Our ulterior motive is to bring one more soul to the kingdom of God, no matter how. So, Lord, thank you for your mercy. May we show that on those around us. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
church, sing it, lift it up. Why don't you stand up and grab a hand. Let's sing on out of here. We're going to sing, You Are Stronger, You Are Stronger. You are strong. 